Welcome to another episode of Little Wars TV. Today we're going to do a rules review and we're going to review Altar of Freedom, which is the club's current ACW rule set, and it's written by none other than our own Greg Wagman, published in 2013. Just for a disclaimer, my name appears in the rules. I'm not going to let that influence my judgment. We rate the rules on five categories on a scale of one to ten. On to the rules. All right, well, our first category is presentation. Uh, again, here's the rule book, Altar of Freedom. Uh, it is... 68 pages. 68 pages. Thank you, Tony. Uh, 68 pages. You got uh, full color photographs, except for the period photographs, of course, uh, ACW. They're black and white. Uh, you got a uh, spiral ring binding on the back, which, if you've watched any of my rules reviews before, you know I absolutely love because it allows you to fold the, the rule book open and it still lays flat. Uh, it's it's very uh, high uh, production values, particularly for a set of rules that it is uh, is as cheap. Uh, cost-wise as these are, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the rules are laid out uh, in very clear um, subject matters, uh, take you, walk you through a turn, uh, all of the different things that you need to do, has some appendices that also include some design notes, how you can put together uh, point-based armies, even though the author makes it very clear he's not particularly fond of that and believes this is a scenario-based uh, rule system, which I would agree with. Right, yep. But, uh, but overall, a really, really nice package. I'll agree with that. The rules themselves are only about 17 pages, but there's a lot of good information about building your armies, building terrain, some very good scenarios. Uh, there's a lot of information in the 68 pages. So what would you give it on a scale of 1 to 10? I'll give it a 7. I actually go a good deal higher than that. I give it a 9. Mm. Alright, our next category is playability. In Alder Freedom, there's no hard and fast rule about basing as long as all the units are on the same size bases. Uh, that will work for both armies. The quick reference sheet is, is well laid out, well organized. Um, it's two sides of one page. The whole game, for all intents and purposes, with the exception of some leader characteristics, the whole game is on the quick reference sheet. This is not something that takes a whole lot of practice to get into. Players can be up and play in this in short order. Yeah, I, I think I think the barrier to entry issue is huge with this game because it's so low. You can be fighting absolutely massive Civil War battles with really not that many figures. Uh, you know, you'll need a fair number of bases, obviously, but what you choose to fill those bases with is really up to you. And you know, again, I can't reiterate enough that the the rules are laid out so well, and we'll talk about this a little bit in mechanics. And the mechanics are so straightforward that from a playability standpoint, I, I think it's extremely high. And the fact that you can play out a major Civil War battle in really three hours. Yep. Uh, is fantastic and is, is something you don't see in very many, if any, other rule sets for this period. In terms of playability, you know what, because you can do a big battle, you can do Antietam in an evening, I'm going to give it a 9 for playability. I, I absolutely agree. I give it a 9 as well. Which brings us to mechanics. Mechanics, uh, you know, you're going to find for a, a good portion of Altar of Freedom the kind of traditional, uh, you know, you, you move a certain amount, you may have defensive fire, you have offensive fire, you roll some dice, and you, you get your result based on some modifiers. So in that sense, I think that the rule set is fairly standard in using that as the base combat mechanic. I think what you're going to find with Altar of Freedom that is that really makes this rule set, and certainly the designer, Greg, talks about this in the designer notes, and, and certainly I've talked with him about it is that it's it's the command and control part of the game that really I think sets this apart from other rule sets because you have first of all you have generals and they have individual personality traits that are based historically on on what their personality traits were and how they performed in the Civil War and that those can have very dramatic effects on how the game progresses and how certain mechanics are used uh, modifications to die rolls or uh, the, the also quite unique uh, method of activating these generals and the units that they command. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. And here's where I'm going to diverge a bit from where you're headed and I'm going to commit some heresy. <laughs> While I had some hand in the mechanics, the thing that I like least about the rule set is the allocating of points to activate the units. Not that I think that it's 
something that's been done to death. Not that I think it's a bad mechanism, but between the time clock and the bidding for points to activate your units, there are those situations where we have a game within the game where we're not fighting the battle, we're fighting to control and, and, and run down the clock. And I think that, while it's not a bad mechanic, I think that sometimes distraction to that game within a game takes away overall from, from the play aspect of the game. I can see that. I mean, I've certainly also been in those games where it does feel like it's more of a race to try and run down the turn clock, uh, which is which is handled by dice, and whoever wins the initiative gets to choose how far it goes down every turn. And so, particularly if you have those defensive scenarios where someone just wants to get to the end of the day, sometimes that becomes the priority as opposed to what's going on in the tabletop. So I, I, I can agree with that. But I think you would have to agree with me that, you know, when it's working, the system works really, really well. Oh, it does. It and, does and, I, and I personally think it works you know, far more often than it doesn't. What can we say briefly about the combat, which is D6-based? Combat is... There's ranged combat, but ranged combat is really skirmish. It's when the two forces touch, when the bases are in contact. That's that 100 yards slugging it out kind of combat. That's where the real casualties come in, much like a Civil War battle. That's when the battle really starts to develop that ebb and flow and your units really start to, either they're performing or they're breaking down and, and, and fading away. I, it just has a good feel for it for the period. Speaking of units breaking down and fading away, there's actually no casualty removal in this game. Entire bases represent the brigades and they're either combat effective or they're not. Uh, and then they're removed entirely. So on mechanics, what would you give it? On mechanics, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah. Again, I'm going to be a little bit higher than you. I'm going to give the mechanics an 8 out of 10. Uh, I really like the way that these rules work, and I've actually kind of dabbled in, in using this the, uh, the mechanics in the game uh, for other time periods, including uh, feudal Japanese warfare, which is not something you would necessarily think fit very well using as its uh, structure uh, ACW set. Well, we're all familiar with your feudal Japanese fetish. Now it brings us to historical flavor. I like these rules for the Civil War. They do have a, a good bit of period flavor. The generals, as Steve alluded to earlier, are all rated for some characteristic specific to that general, and not necessarily overall, but that general in that particular scenario. Again, this is a scenario-driven rule set. So, Lee may be brilliant in some battles and horrible in others. Um, and the general's traits uh, add a, a good bit of chrome and flavor to the game in that some of the generals, you have to think how you're going to handle the generals and, and their traits. Uh, because it is, it is, the rule set is designed to cover kind of grand tactical battles, uh, and there aren't a whole lot of modifiers, and, and there aren't, aren't a whole lot of, of specific mechanics for even necessarily troop types other than artillery versus you know, infantry and maybe cavalry have a little bit more movement. I think the mechanics themselves of the game on the tabletop are fairly generic. Uh, you know, as much as in the last section I talked about being able to adapt it for use in other time periods, well, part of that is because they're somewhat generic. So it really does rely on the, the, the general's traits to give it that historical flavor. Um, I don't know that there is a way that for the actual tabletop stuff you could have given it more of a historical flavor, but if, that, if there's an area that it falls short, maybe it is there. Uh, so for historical flavor, I don't give it as high a score as I do on, on some of the others. Uh, I would give it an 8, uh, and of that probably a good 6 points are all because of the general's traits and uh, the way that those are, are handled in a very creative and interesting way. I'll go along with that. I'll second that. I'll go an 8 as well on historical flavor. So now we come to uh, support. Uh, you know, what is out there beyond just the rule book if you decide to go ahead and purchase this? Uh, I mean, a couple areas to look at support. One I look at is, is what additional stuff is out there? What, what additional scenario books? Because again, that's important with this rule set because they are designed to be used with scenarios and not so much just pick up games where people build an army for a certain amount of points. And, you know, Greg, as, as the, the author, has certainly put out some of those scenario books and focused on the, the battles of the East and the battles of the West. And so that level of support is there. Now, if you have a question about the rules, 
there isn't uh, a forum you can go to uh, to discuss it. Uh, I, I think Greg has told me he answers emails every once in a while about uh, about the rules, which is helpful as far as it goes. But uh, you know, really, if I'm going to give a high score on support, I want there to be an active community and you know a forum where you can go to and get help from from the author and, and stuff like that, and you know just you know new material coming out on a regular basis to support the product and. And that's that's really not there at the level that I think, you know, would be great, but Greg's a very, very busy man. Very busy. Well, I, you know, as, as far as new material for any historical period, at some point or another, there isn't any. Um, so I'm not going to fault him for that. Um, Greg does have a website. Maybe we can put that up as a link at the end um, for some information about the game, some scenarios, uh, some of the terrain making stuff he's done. Some of that information is available. So what would you give him for support? I'm going to give it a five. Okay. I'm going to give it a six. Okay. And then good, good, uh, good thing remembering about the website, which has the, uh, the terrain tips. There are some really excellent ones on there, actually. So to wrap things up and our final thoughts on Altar of Freedom, uh, if you've watched any of our other rules reviews, you know that we weight the score that we give for each of the five categories, and that's how we arrive at our final score. For presentation and support, they're worth 10% each. Historical flavor is worth 20%, while playability and mechanics are worth 30% each. So when you add up my scores and you do all the weighting, you arrive at a final of 82, which is pretty good for me. And I came out to a 71, which also I... I think that's a good score for a rule set. I really do. Here's the big question. Do you think these rules are worth the cost? And that cost being $25 for a hard copy or $15 for a PDF? Well worth the money. Frankly, I think that's a steal. I, I do really like yeah. this rule set. I think if you want to do grand tactical battles that you can play in one night, this is the rule set you want to go with and it's not going to bankrupt you in the process. If you go to our website, you can see other members of club have scored the rules as well. And we're always looking for feedback. If you've played the rules, you have any experience, you can certainly give us your feedback, your scores on the rules. That's right. Thanks a lot for watching Little Wars TV.